What's up, Rockstar? Coach Betty Rocker here. Welcome to today's low impact legs and booty workout session. Now, today we're going to really be focusing a lot on our glutes. We're going to be targeting our glute minimus, our glute medius, and our gluteus maximus. And these three muscles really work together to stabilize you when you're standing upright. They work with your lower back muscles and your hamstrings as well. Everything sort of works together in the posterior chain to help keep us upright, help us extend extend our leg back when we're walking, help us with external rotation, and also with abduction, which is when we bring our leg out to the side. I say abduction because adduction, meaning adduction, is when we bring our legs in together. Abduction is when we bring them out to the side. So you're gonna find in today's workout that we are targeting some uh, movements that all work together that are working extension, abduction, and external rotation. So see if you can see where those all come in. And when you are doing workouts that target your glutes, make sure that you're getting a full spectrum workout to really target the entire gluteal area. And don't forget about training your hamstrings and lower back as well to really see your butt lift and pop. So let's get right into this. We're going to start out working and opening up our gluteus minimus. And you can go ahead and grab maybe a lightweight object, or maybe you wanna put a stretchy band around your thighs, or even wear an ankle weight for some extra resistance. I'm gonna go ahead and stand holding on to the side of my column here, and I'm just gonna hold my water bottle, or I could be using a dumbbell here, against the side of my leg as I begin with just some standing side leg raises. And guess what motion we're doing here? We're doing abduction, that's right. The leg is lifting away from us. And if you slow it down as you bring it back in, you're gonna get a little bit more of that eccentric contraction and work a little bit of the adductor muscles, which are in your inner thighs. So you can mix this workout up a little bit if you like to get a little more variety. But we're just really working on um, warming up and toning that gluteus minimus, which is that small muscle at the top of your glutes. And we are gonna just do about 10 to 15 of these leg raises on our left side as we're getting started. Make sure that you have a nice stable base through your standing foot and that you can balance there. That's why I'm holding on to the side of my wall. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it around and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, working the glute min on the right leg, holding my weighted object against my upper thigh for some additional stability making sure that my core stays engaged, no arch backs, nice and stable and balanced through that standing left foot. Great work. And remember what I said, you could also be using a stretchy band if you didn't want to hold something against the side of your leg, or you could be using ankle weights for this one just to add a little extra resistance and work to that outside leg. You can also drop the weights altogether and not hold anything at all. Great work. Last one. So good. Feel that little burn in the outside of your upper butt? I sure do. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna get into a little bit more of the gluteus medius, and that we're gonna use some squats to do that. So with our squat form, so today's low impact, and I wanna really get into form, because when it comes to functional fitness, we wanna make sure that we're really activating the correct muscles as we work through all of these movements so that we can tune into what we need to do in our bodies when we're doing our everyday movements in our everyday life. Squatting down, bending over, twisting, all those things, it's important to have good form. So start out with your feet just a little bit wider than hip distance, and as you can see, I'm gonna sit down to my ottoman, which is about at my knee height, maybe a little bit below. So if you're gonna use a box or bench or elevated surface to help cue you, make sure it's not too high. Okay, I'm gonna engage my core, and I'm just gonna tune in. Okay, I'm gonna arch my back on purpose, and then I'm gonna tuck my tailbone down, feeling my core engage. I'm checking in to make sure my shoulders are not rounded forward, or my upper back's not rounded forward. I'm gonna be upright, gently rotating my shoulder blades back and down. I'm holding my weighted objects up at my shoulders, because that feels pretty comfortable to me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sit down with control, hinging at the hips, just tapping my glutes down, to my elevated surface, engaging my abs as I come down. Now for these first three, I want you to really engage your core as you come down and then squeeze your glutes on the top. Now you can stay with your elevated surface 
Or if you feel confident and you know you can nail that form, keeping your chest upright, keeping your core engaged as you drive your hips back, go ahead and leave your box or elevated surface behind you and come right into unassisted squats. But you wanna really make sure you're activating the correct muscles for this and not um, pitching your weight forward onto your toes or bending forward at the waist. And I always recommend having a mirror handy so you can really watch your form. Now one of the best ways, I think, to work on activating the correct muscles is to make sure that you're using that elevated surface so that you can really tune in. And I'm imagining that I'm wearing a crown on my head. And each time I squat down, I'm not gonna allow that crown to fall down or pitch forward in any way. So that's part of keeping your chest up. And for that, you need to really be activating your glutes. Great work. Make sure your knees are tracking in line with your toes. It can be helpful to have a stretchy band around your, above your knees to help make sure that you're gently pressing your knees out and in line with your toes and not allowing them to collapse in. Core is engaged and we press up. Let's do one more together here. Awesome work. All right, Woo. so now we're gonna come into some single leg hip thrusters. And for this, we'll also be using the ottoman or you could use the side of a chair in your house, the side of your couch, whatever's handy. Maybe you're at the gym and you wanna use the bench. So let's go ahead and set ourselves up for these single leg hip thrusts, which are really gonna fire up our glute max because we're gonna be coming up into an extension. So that's gonna really get that big gluteal working muscle here. And of course your hamstrings are gonna be getting some work too. So as you come up, let's go ahead and test this out with both feet down. Drop your butt down, position your uh, the side of your couch or the side of your elevated surface so it's right at the base of your shoulder blades. Engage your core. And as you press up, notice, are your knees bending to 90 degrees or are your feet in a little bit too close to your seat where you feel a strain on your knees as you come up? This is what I want you to check in on before we do anything else. So check in on how far away your feet need to be. From here, once you've done a couple like this, go ahead and lift your left foot up and press up with just your right heel. <sighs> Come on, you got this. Keep your core engaged, really drive through that heel. You are keeping your entire foot balanced on the floor here, but your, your heel is really pressing through and you'll feel this immediately in your glute. If you feel like this is too easy, go ahead and add a little extra resistance to your hip crease to make this even more challenging. Great work. <sighs> breathing. Try to get 10, but between 8 and 12 reps is a really good range for this particular move. Oh, and I think I just hit my limit there, especially with the addition of the extra resistance. I'm going to do my first couple on the other side with no resistance at all to warm up that leg and have it be even with the right side. So make sure that your foot is in a good optimal position for you, just like it was in the first one. Great job. And if you feel called to do so, add a little extra resistance to your hip crease. Nice, make sure your hips are staying level. Don't allow your right hip to sag down uh, just because your leg is straight, straight out from your body. And if you need a little help, go ahead and kickstand your foot down to give yourself a little extra balance at any time. Last one for me. Oh. Oh, I felt that for sure. How you doing? Okay, we're gonna go right back to the beginning where we started, and we're gonna do another set of those standing leg raises to work up to the top of our glutes again. So this time I'm gonna grab one of my weights just a little heavier than the water bottle, and I'll stand against my wall, and I'm just gonna lift my leg up and out to the side. Now, if you'd like to work a little bit more on your adductors, which of course are your inner thighs, you can slow it down and just go a little slower than me. I'm focusing on my abductors today. So on lifting and lowering, great work. Up and out, up and out. So strong, come on. In and out, in and out. You may start to feel some fatigue in your right leg, which is great. It's just you're getting a bonus workout in your right standing leg, even as you're working the glute min on your left side. Last one, 
Go ahead and switch. Hold on to something for balance. Be upright, plant down through your left foot, engage your core, and begin lifting out and up with your right leg. Great job. You can definitely be using any of the optional resistance items for this, holding a water bottle or dumbbell at your leg, or having a stretchy band around your ankles, or using a cable. All of those things are gonna work this particular muscle. There's lots of ways to make this work for you, whether you're at home, the gym, wherever you happen to be. Last five, four, three, two, last one. Oh, so strong. How was that? You did great. All right, moving into our squat. Never be ashamed if you are gonna continue to take a modification or if you feel like you're continuing to work on your form, if you wanna still use the box to tap your butt down to or your couch or wherever you, you are, form is the most important part of how we do these moves. It's not how many you do, it's not how fast you do them, it's how well you do them. It's all about quality over quantity. So allow your body, listen to your body, allow your body to teach you and show you what it can do. Don't force it. Here we go, I'm gonna stand tall, I'm just wiggling around my feet, really finding balance through all four corners of those feet. Maybe three corners is the better way to say it. <laughs> my heel is kind of like one of the corners. Making sure they're even engaging my core, and then I'm gonna sit down as if I were sitting down to my chair. Now I do not have to sit down super deep. If you feel like right about here you start to pitch forward, only come to here, then come back up. Remember, each time you send your hips back, your core should come in and up, and the reason we do this is to actively engage our transverse abdominal muscle, which is our body's almost natural weight belt. It's a thin piece of abdominal muscle that wraps around and attaches to your posterior iliac, PSIS, posterior superior iliac spine, which is basically like right around your SI joint, and you want to make sure that your pelvis is really in the right position so that you're not hyperextending your lower back. So engaging that uh, transverse abdominal muscle by actively pulling your belly button in and up can be really helpful help your, your body stay really nice and stable and secure. Don't forget that knee alignment. You can check in anytime. Make sure your shoulders are back and down. I'm gonna do two more. Feel free to stop before me. Feel free to go a little bit farther. Squeezing the butt on the way up. Glute meat is the muscle we're working here. And of course, we're getting quads, legs, and all the rest. Um, our shoulders have to work, our arms have to work to hold up those weighted objects. Bend your knees to set down your weighted objects and join me with your back against the side of an elevated surface. Let's check in with our foot alignment once more. Want to make sure that our feet aren't in too close to our seat. Make sure that your back is resting comfortably against your elevated surface right about the bottom of your shoulder blades. And we're going to go ahead, right from the start, grab some resistance, extend out with the left leg, sink down with your right glute, and then using your heel, press through and press up. Totally fine if you need to readjust at any point with your foot position. If you start to feel any pressure on your knee, try walking your foot a little bit farther away from your body. I'm sweating. I love these low impact focused workouts. They're so much fun, so effective. We're really, really focusing in on specific key muscle groups today that will help your posture and alignment. Your goal here is to try to hit at least eight and at max 12. So make sure that you've got enough resistance to do that. Oh my gosh, that was definitely enough for me. <laughs> I'm gonna switch to the other leg. Feel free to do a couple extra reps if you have them. And begin again. I can tell that I started out just about an inch too close to my butt, so I just readjusted. And keep that right leg out in front of you, or feel free to drop it down to kickstand it if you need a little extra support. Don't forget about your abs, your core, keep them nice and turned on. Amazing work. Last one for me, maybe two, I think I can do two more. And my end feel, when I say I have two more to do, that means I know I could force out one or two more reps, but I don't go to complete failure because we're going through three rounds of this super circuit. So 
We work within the 8 to 12 rep range for some of these moves with added resistance, and we go through it three times. So we don't want to go to complete failure. Uh, we want to push ourselves to be able to do at least 8 and no more than 12. If you can go past 12, add a little more resistance. If you can barely make 8, go down a little bit in resistance. Go to body weight, and that's always the right place to start. All right, one last round of this full superset, and we're gonna move on to another superset. I'm gonna grab my weight, stand against my wall, and coming right back into our standing straight leg raises. You can point your toe if you like. Doesn't really make that much difference. It'll give you a little bit of a pump in your calf if you alternate between pointing the toe and straightening your foot out as you come down to the floor. Nice little option. Woo, I'm feeling this. How you doing? Can't wait to hear your comments on today's workout and see your check-ins. Thank you so much for all of your amazing posts on social media, tagging me, letting me know that you're working out with me and the Team Ready Rocker coaches. We love seeing you. Keep it up, last three. This is our last set of these. Last two, last one. Oh my gosh. Going to switch to the other side. Really working that upper glute. Here we go. Standing tall, engaging our core, and lift and lower. Lift and lower. You got this. Come on. I really like holding onto the wall with this one so that I can focus all of my energy on the lift. It's enough to try to balance through that standing foot without having to feel like I'm going to fall over. But if you feel stronger and you want to practice this without holding on to the wall, that's just going to challenge your standing leg even more. So go right ahead and advance. Great job. Oh, last three, two, one. Oh, felt that. <laughs> so good. All right, moving on to our last and final set of squats. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my weighted objects. Again, feel free to use the elevated surface or box to cue you. Maybe you want to just use it for your first couple just to check your form. And then you want to move away from it. Really up to you here. Make sure that your feet are just a little wider than hip distance. Re-engage your core. Round your shoulders back and down, especially if you're holding on to those weighted objects. Make sure that you're not collapsing forward in your chest at all. That'll compromise your back. There's no need to rush it here. Maybe you want to rock back and forth between both of your feet. Check in with your foot alignment. Make sure your arches aren't collapsed in. Make sure your knees are really lined up over your toes. And as we engage our abdominals and keep our knees tracking in line with the toes, we're going to sink our hips back and then power up through those glutes once more. Sink it back, engaging the core, and power up. Now, one of the reasons I really like to be barefoot or in socks while doing any kind of resistance training is so that I can really feel the way my feet are articulating with the ground. And that's going to translate up into your ankles, knees, and in, into your hips. And that alignment is going to really help you and help your joints over time with the amount of wear and tear that they have. So just be really aware of if you are wearing sneakers or any kind of specialty footwear while you're training, how your footwear may be changing the balance of your feet and how they, they meet the ground. So if you do want to check out uh, using barefoot training and you haven't before, give yourself a chance to build up to that. Don't go cold turkey into a sneaker right away. You'll need a little time to get used to how your feet feel on the ground and build some strength in those foot muscles. Woo! These squats are feeling really good. This is our last set. And I've got one and last one. All right, amazing work. All right, we're gonna come into that final set of the single leg hip thrusts. And then you are done with round one. And I know that we've gone past the 20 minute mark or so. And this slow, controlled, low impact circuit would be perfect as by itself as your workout today. So if you are short on time, you go right ahead after we're done with this one and call it a day. Or you can come back and do round two later today, which is really awesome. Or you can continue forward and power right through the full workout. All totally up to you. Let's plant our feet down. I'm going to start with my left 
knee down, my left foot down, my right leg is gonna come out straight, balancing right at the base of my shoulders with my elevated surface, and I'm pressing down through my entire foot. Great work, really emphasizing, feeling as if I were gonna press the ground away from me, which can be a nice kind of cue to really help you isolate and fire up your glutes. Awesome work. We're really focusing on that lift and press. Eight to 12 total here, you're doing amazing. Keep up the great work. Really feeling it in this last set. And I've got one more to go. And switching legs. Feel free if you have a couple more in you, go right ahead. Remember your end feel. You'll want to feel as if you could do maybe one to two more and then you'd really be done at failure. So we don't want to push all the way to failure because we had three total rounds. Here we go. We're switching to that right side. Lift and press. Lift and press. I hope you're smiling with me because, man, I feel like so grateful that I get to exercise, I get to work out. It's a privilege to have this amazing strong body and it's amazing how it functions and how it works. So I wanna do everything I can to support and protect my joints, can improve my bone density, my muscular strength, all of my abilities, which I want to last for my entire lifetime. And I want the same thing for you as well. So really pay attention to your form. No need to rush these. I know today is really a back to basics almost, or we're really dialing in that form, really slowing things down. And we need that. I need that. We all need that. Last one for me. And oh, press it up. Oh my gosh, amazing work. Now, you totally have a pass. If you need to get going, I want you to just carve out another 20 minutes maybe later today to do the second half of this workout. Or if you have time and energy, we're gonna do it again. It's just so crucial that you don't train the same muscle groups on back-to-back -back days. You wanna be able to let your muscle groups recover fully before you train them again. So I wouldn't do a glute workout again tomorrow. Instead, if you have time, do a second glute workout today or stick with me and do the longer glute workout all in one go. We're gonna move on now, if you're still staying around, to uh, superset number two. And for this one, we're gonna actually start right out down on the mat. I'm gonna move my little box out of the way. And you can either use a stretchy band around above your, your, your knees for this one, or you can hold a weighted object uh, on, your, on your leg, which is what I'm going to do for this one. So we're going to start out again with that gluteus minimus focus, targeting that upper part of our glute. And I'm struggling with balancing my little <laughs> weighted object, so find your sweet spot. And then we're just gonna do clamshells. So we're, we're really working that external rotation that we talked about at the beginning of this workout, really targeting the glute minimus and the glute medius with this particular movement. Really nice work. We're not gonna be here for long, so really focus on that lift and squeeze. And if you don't have a weighted object, for example, you could just press against your knee as you push up and out to give yourself that extra resistance. Now we're gonna go ahead and straighten everything out, make sure your hips are nice and square, and we're gonna lift and lower that top leg. Beautiful, great job, come on. Stay nice and focused here, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful work, let's go ahead and switch it around to the other side. Staying very focused, bending the knees, coming down to rest your head in your hand, and finding sort of a good balancing point for your resistance object or pressing your hand down into your outer thigh as you lift, open and close your clamshell. Great work. Really feel this really tiny micro movement, really targeting and working those glutes. So good really helpful for balance and stability, these smaller little working muscles. And now straighten the legs out. And again, big leg lifts. This is very similar to what we were doing in round one, in superset one, where we were standing and doing the side leg lift. This is just gonna add a little extra bonus work and uh, isolate that muscle group again before we move on to some of the bigger working muscles. 
Good work. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Great work. All right. Woo. Woo. Move number two. This is where we're going to really target that bigger gluteus maximus. And for that, we need an extension. So you can either do a bridge lift here, where you're going to be down on your back. You're going to engage your back down to the mat, flattening it out, engaging your core, finding a sweet spot with your feet so that when you lift up into your bridge, you're isolating your glutes and you're not putting pressure on your knees. So you want to make sure everything is aligned. Sometimes I'll wear a stretchy band around the outside of my knees to really make sure I'm pressing my knees out and they're not collapsing in. Really notice that each time you lift up into that bridge lift, you're pressing your back down into the mat to really isolate the glutes as much as possible. You could also put your weighted object over your hips and lift up to get even more resistance. That's option one. Option two is we're gonna do hamstring pull through, which is gonna work both our glutes and get our hamstrings fired up for our final move of this super circuit. So you're gonna dig your heels down, open your shoulders up, and lift up. Now I said this is option two for move one because it might not be comfortable for you to have pressure on your wrists. It might be that you have a little bit rounded forward shoulders that you're working on opening up. And I hope that you're using the chest stretches that I've taught you in the past and really strengthening your back muscles to help bring stability into your rotator cuff area. Very important to really train and balance. And if you're fine in this position, great. Go for it. You're going to be working glute max in both positions, in both the bridge lift and the hamstring pull through. And you have the option to add the weighted object in there for additional resistance in either case. You're doing great. Hang in there. there there's a will, there's a way. Try to squeeze out eight to 12 or whatever you can with this one. I see my weighted object is falling off. <laughs> I've got one more, I'm gonna hold it up and squeeze. <sighs> and then lower all the way down. Excellent work. Okay, moving on to our final move of superset two. And it's going to be um, a variation of a deadlift. So you've probably seen the deadlift before. You may have even tried a single leg deadlift before. What we're going to do today is work on our strength for doing single leg deadlifts, but by using the split stance deadlift. So first and foremost, roll your shoulders back and down if you're holding resistance objects. You can totally try this one out with no resistance at all. I'm gonna step my right foot back behind me, not too far, pretty close to my forward foot, and I'm gonna put all or most of my weight into my left standing leg and really check in with the corners of my feet, inside, outside, and heel. Upright, engage those, those abdominals, and then I'm gonna hinge, sending my hips back behind me, imagining that I'm gonna to come to a flat back position, keeping my weighted objects in super close to my shins. Now I'm at a flat back where I can imagine a big tray balanced on my back, and I feel a stretch in my hamstring. From here, I'm gonna use my left glute strength to pull me back up to standing. And repeat, send the hips back, drag the weighted objects down the shins, flat back, come back up to standing. Beautiful work. Every time you hinge it forward, keep that core nice and tight and engaged. It's natural for your knee to bend slightly here, but you don't wanna fully bend it or you'll come into more of a single leg squat or lunge. Again, bend forward, hinging at the hips, and up. All or most of your weight should be in that front foot. Core comes in and up. And the reason we want to keep the weighted objects in close to our shins is to really help protect our back. If you let your weighted objects go out in front of you, your back is going to be straining in order to hold them. So we keep everything in close and tight to the body. Beautiful work. 8 to 12 total here. And we're going to do both legs. Hang in there. And if this feels weird to you, that's okay. Try it out. It's okay if it feels funny. You know, it always feels a little weird when we're learning something new. Trust yourself. Just use less resistance when you're beginning. So, so important. You don't need to force yourself to 
go faster, go harder, go heavier. You wanna be where you're at so that you can get stronger safely, so that you can get stronger and stay stronger for your entire life. I'm gonna switch legs now. Right foot's gonna come in front, left foot's gonna come slightly behind. Now you can vary how far back your foot comes. The farther back it is, uh, the easier this will be. The closer it is, the more challenging it will be. So I like about this distance, um, not very far, maybe six to eight inches, maybe that's more like 12, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I can't tell how far the way that is, but um, go ahead and roll your shoulders back, engage your core, and hinge your hips back as you keep those weighted objects in close to your body and come up to squeeze. Down, engaging your core, up, squeeze your right glute. Again, hinge forward, keeping those shoulders back. Don't let them round forward. You got this. Beautiful work. Hang in there. Really targeting your gluteus medius and your gluteus maximus, as well as your hamstrings with this one. And we're isolating one side at a time. You're definitely going to feel this tomorrow. <laughs> and that's another reason I don't want you to be overtraining. I don't want you to train the same muscle groups tomorrow as you train today. We want to vary the intensity of our training. We want to vary the muscle groups that we train so that each of the muscle groups that we hit hard in one day get a chance to recover fully and so that you get the maximum result and maximum benefit out of every workout that you do. Of course, you can vastly increase how quickly you see results by improving the quality of your nutrient intake after and around every workout that you do by getting good quality sleep so essential for muscle growth and repair and maintaining and paying attention to your stress levels last one for me <sighs> great job and why i say that about stress is because stress will really mess with your hormones and your hormone levels it elevates cortisol which breaks down muscle and increases the amount of body fat that you store. So really being mindful of your stress level. Something as simple as a daily gratitude practice can really help you so, so much when it comes to um, lowering stress. And I'm sure that you know lots of great techniques that lower stress. Sometimes just being mindful and aware when we are stressed out is really important. Let's go ahead and do this clamshell, opening and closing, opening, and closing, beautiful work. It doesn't matter which side you started on. I'm lifting and lowering my left leg for this first set. Very good. And now I'm gonna straighten the legs out and we're gonna do straight leg raises. Beautiful work. Hang in there. Awesome job. You should feel the outside of that upper butt working for you here. Eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's switch to the other side. There we go. And coming back into our clamshell position. Here we go. Lifting and lowering. Externally rotating that hip out and open. Keeping your toes touching, which will help really focus on that muscle group. Beautiful work. It's not a big movement. Nice and small, controlled, and very effective. Great job. Really good for pelvic stabilization, these little tiny movements. Nice job. All right, let's straighten the legs out. Here we go. S square and stack the hips. Great job. Hang in there. You're almost through this entire workout. So good. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent work. All right, setting ourselves up for move two. It's either a bridge lift or that hamstring pull through I showed you in our last um, round. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a weighted object in my hip creases for a little extra resistance. Now. Get yourself set up. If you're doing your bridge lift, go ahead and get in position. If you're doing the hamstring pull through, roll your shoulders back, dig your heels into the floor, and then pull yourself up to reverse tabletop. Come back down and repeat. 
great job. Keep that core nice and engaged, whether you're doing bridge lifts or hamstring pull-throughs. Feel your glutes really powerfully activating through this entire movement. Feel your hamstrings turning on to support and stabilize and pull you through. Really dig those heels down. Great job, come on. So strong. I've got three, two, and on the last one, I'm gonna hold it up and squeeze. Hang in there and lower down. Beautiful work. All right, setting ourselves up for round two of split stance deadlifts. Go ahead and grab your weighted objects and come into your split stance position. So once again, we're gonna start with that left foot in front of us, right foot kickstands back. Shoulders roll back and down. We engage our core in and up. No arched back, nice tight little pelvic tuck. And we're gonna hinge our hips back, coming to a flat back, keeping the weighted objects in close to our shins and power back up, using your glutes to power you up. Feel the hamstrings stretch as you come down. Don't forget to engage your belly button in and up. Beautiful work, hinge forward. So strong, you will feel this. Oh my gosh, so good. Keep your weight light on your back foot. Check in again. Are you balanced evenly through your front foot? Is your arch collapsing? Are you too much on your front toes? Just pay attention to that stuff and work on it. It's all a practice. You're not getting it wrong if you're not able to get into the exact position right away. Be kind to yourself in this process. As children, it takes us time to learn things and we forget once we've learned them that there was a big learning curve and there was a big process, right? Let's be good to ourselves as adults when we're going through the process of learning and creating change in our bodies. Amazing job, last one for me. And I'm gonna switch legs, planting the right foot in front, the left foot kicks standing gently behind, just a little bit of contacting pressure there, checking back in with our shoulders, rolling them back and down, planting down strong through the foot, hinging forward at the hips and then powering up through that glute. Again, hinge it forward and power up. Beautiful work. Hinge it forward, belly button comes in and up. And I probably sound like a broken record, <laughs> repeating the same cues to you over and over. But I want for you, when you're in your house, when you're doing your chores around the house, in your garden maybe, on your deck, um, in your laundry room, in your kitchen, even at your actual job, that you have good form as you're bending down and picking things up. When you are in a in cramped space and you have to force your body into an awkward position, that you know how to engage your core, that you know how to keep your, your shoulders engaged so that you don't hurt your back or hurt your rotator cuff. I want you to be safe and strong. And like I said before, I want you to be able to make this last a lifetime. I want you to improve your bone density, increase your muscle strength, improve your stamina, build your confidence in yourself as you move through these awesome movements with me. Last one. Great job. All right, final, final round before we're done for the day. Let's do this. Let's make this the best one yet. We're going to come to our sideline position into our clamshell pose, resting our head in our hand, and we're going to open and close the clamshell. Great job. Up and out, using your resistance to help make this even more effective. And even just pressing your hand against the outside of your leg is going to do that. So give it your best. Come on, last two. Last one. Now let's straighten the legs out. Here we go. And lift and lower. Great work. Come on, lift and lower. Don't let your hips shift around. Doing so well. Last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Amazing work. Let's switch it around to the other side. It's the final push through to the end. So good. Here we go. Coming into our clamshell position on the other side. Feet are touching and we open 
and close the knees. Excellent work. Small movement. Can you tell that you're working your core as we move through this entire circuit with me? I can definitely feel it. Your core is working literally all the time in these functional movements. It has to. It has to help stabilize you. Part of how you're able to keep your hips what I call square to keep your body upright here is by using your core strength. So if you're wobbling around, that's okay, it's normal. Maybe you wanna just take your hand off of your leg or don't worry about the weight and just put your hand down in front of you to brace yourself so that you can support your core as it gets stronger. And a lot of people will ask me, you know, how, why don't I see my abs? You know, what, when am I gonna be able to see my abs? <laughs> and a lot of that just comes down to being consistent with your training because our body fat, you know, we have, we all have abs. A lot of it is just our body fat um, doesn't allow us to really see the lines or the definition of the muscle that we have. And that is something that will happen over time, but you have to be patient and you must be consistent with your training. Last five, four, three, two, one. Awesome work. All right, coming into our hamstring pull-ins or bridge lifts, your choice. So if you're looking at your progress and you're looking at your progress pictures, if you're not seeing the change happen, say for example in your abs yet, but if you look at yourself holistically, you'll see that change is happening in other parts of your body. And if you stick with your training and if you stay consistent and you do the things I've been talking about, about taking rest days and changing up what you're training each day, which happens when you have a good program to follow, you will start to see those changes catch up to the areas that you most want to see them. Because, of course, because of genetics, our body fat comes off never in the order that we want it to. It comes off in the order it came on. Dig your heels in, set up your core, lift up and squeeze. Lift up and squeeze. So combining, adding that lean muscle, which will help you burn more calories at rest, and of course, both explosive cardio and endurance training like we're doing today, which is low impact. It's just as effective as walking. So going out for a nice long walk is a great low impact endurance training um, that will help you really burn a lot of calories, help you burn fat. You don't have to go high impact with the cardio to see results. It just might take a little longer because you just need to sustain it for a little bit longer, but you can do it. You just need to be consistent. This is what I love and why I, oh, I know that I see such incredible results from members of the Rock Through Life group because they take challenge after challenge. They're able to stay consistent. They never get bored. There's always some variety for them. We also offer new classes every week. Last two, last one, hold it up and squeeze. So you can stay on track. Plus there's nutrition, guidance, recipes, a community to support you. All of those things that really help us you know, stay consistent, stay balanced in our training. Last one, and lower down. Oh my gosh, love, love, love it. So strong. All right, final move. All right, are you ready? We're gonna do the split stance deadlift. I love this move so much, so fun. Oh my gosh. Bring yourself into position. Roll your shoulders back and down. Step your left foot forward, right foot back a little bit behind you. Most of the weight should be in your left forward foot and hinge forward at the hips, engaging your core, keeping those weighted objects in close to your shins and up. Again, hinge it forward and up. Beautiful work. This is our last move. Just have to do both legs. We get to do both legs. Yes, amazing. Feel that stretch through your hamstring. Check in with your foot. Always be checking in. As you start to get tired, your body will play tricks on you. It will start to try to compensate sometimes. So don't push past your limit just because you hit a certain number of reps last time. Be with your body. Become one with your body. Allow your body to tell you when it's at its limit. Go really just with your best form that you can. Be mindful. Last one for me. Ooh, I'm really feeling that in my glute and hamstring. Holy moly. Right foot forward this time. Left foot kickstands back. Roll the shoulders back. Engage the core. And hinge it forward. And up. Squeezing the glute at the top. Hinge it forward. And up. Beautiful work. 
hinging it forward and up. Great job. What I was saying before about being consistent is so, so vital, not just for hitting a goal that we have, but for maintaining our fitness through our entire life, right? We wanna be able to continue these healthy habits that we've built and continue to make them fun and never get bored, right? Our body loves variety for a reason. We love variety. It's, it's totally natural that you want different things, that you wanna to continue to challenge yourself in new ways. And this is really why I created the Rock Your Life program so that you have new challenges to take all the time, new things to challenge your mind and challenge your body. Last one, and up, amazing work. And I am so proud of you for completing today's workout. And I really just wanna invite you to grab a 30-day trial to Rock Your Life where I can support you with all of the challenges, the classes, the coaching, the community, the recipes, all of those things at your fingertips. You're just so, so welcome in there. It's just, there's a 30 day trial, so you have time to check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. Thank you so much for joining me for today's workout. I look forward to your check-in and comment below this video post. Thank you again so much for being here. You're awesome and amazing, and I can't wait to see you again for our next workout. Bye for now.